What is going on, everybody? I am Garrett Garcia, and welcome to the first, first episode of the Triple Threats podcast. Um, we're going to have some of the industry's best Triple Threats on, and today we have a very special, special guest straight from Broadway. We got Jeremy Morse here joining us today. How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing great, and I am truly impressed by the quality <laughs> of the intro. I'm like, this is fantastic. The production quality is awesome, dude. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like to rock out to that song before I uh, come <laughs> on in. So how have things been during quarantine? Everything's good? Yeah. I mean, like, as good as quarantine can be. I, it's I just the weirdest year. It's it's very surreal that, like, we're coming up on one year of Broadway <laughs> shutting down, of, you know, the world really I, just coming to terms with, with the pandemic. Yeah, I know. I feel like it was like one year ago, we were like doing the fist pumping thing. I keep telling everybody that like, oh, a year ago this year, we were like, uh, starting to like distance ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. talking about it. I know. Which is, it's crazy. I think like guests backstage were stopping mm -hmm. and I know you were, you were on tour. Were you not? Yeah. I was yeah. on tour with Frozen, the musical. Yeah. We were in Portland. Oregon when this all happened. Yeah, in, in the week week or two leading up to the shutdown, we started doing backstage tour. We stopped doing backstage tours. We stopped signing at the stage door. We were ramping up to do uh, collections for Broadway Cares. And it was just, yeah, it was just very surreal. Um, a lot of us from the Frozen tour, like going down memory lane, like just remember those those weeks and days leading up to that night. And I, I remember walking into company management the night that the NBA shut down, which was the night mm -hmm. before that every that commercial theater was like, we can't do this anymore. And right. uh, I just remember having that moment. I was like, okay, so the NBA isn't playing anymore. How can we move forward with? theater with all of these people on stage with so many thousands of people cramming into an auditorium and it just you know, it wasn't possible right well i remember when when broadway first you know shut down they were like oh everybody was posting oh we'll see you april 12th whatever it's just going to be like a month whatever whatever and here we are a whole year later and then there was in between all that time there were still little maybe we'll reopen this date maybe and then another wave came through you know the two weeks of flattening the curve and then another mm -hmm. another week would, would uh another month would be shut down and then that, that just kept extending so that's yeah. hard but we're gonna get into all that and the frozen tour and where you were um but i want to start off with your long long journey with one of my favorite broadway shows waitress because i feel like you have been with that show for so long and yeah. you, you, uh, for those of you who don't know, Jeremy originated the role of Ogie, um, when waitress was at the American Repertory theater and look at that OG playbill. I love I it. Or not even playbill, but yeah. Um, yeah. It still has like a program, the little slip and everything in there. And, um, so yeah, you originated the role of Ogie. Um, at this production and it was your debut at the American Repertory Theater as well. Correct. Um, so let's start off with that. Like, how did you, how did you, um, the, like the audition process for that, were you called in? Cause, um, it wasn't, was it straight out of college? No. Oh my gosh. Oh. I am so, I am so old. Um, <laughs> you don't look old. um, um, thank you very much. Um, I need to moisturize more. So <laughs> that's, that's something I'm working on. Um, no, so I, I was 28 at the time of the audition, and I I got the audition through my manager, and it was very surreal. I, I remember seeing the audition breakdown and seeing Sarah Bareilles' name and Diane Paulus' name. I was like, "This is all right. This is very uh, this is a very cool, legit commercial show. I love Sarah Bareilles' music. Uh, Diane Paulus is such an amazing director." And I had two weeks to prepare for the audition. 
And I, I remember I was building Ikea furniture uh, in my apartment, in my old apartment in Washington Heights and memorizing Never Getting Rid of Me and the scene uh, to the tracks that were given to me by casting to memorize um, and to work on the material. And it was very, very surreal doing that. I, I had my audition was going in to the, it was the entire team. So it was Sarah Bareilles, it was Diane Paulus, it was Nadia, uh, the music supervisor, mm -hmm. uh, choreography producers. It was a room of like 25 people at Telsey casting. And I, I walked in and it was very surreal. I went through the scene. It was the scene before Never Getting Rid of Me into the song and that was the audition. So I went in, I did it once. I messed up the lyrics like multiple times. And every time I did, I would do a box step and say, <laughs> here we go. And like taking it back to the beginning of that phrase. And I, I mean, was so nervous. Yeah. I think that, I think that even helped you more, honestly. Like, I feel like that's- Knowing Ogie, yeah, knowing probably. Ogie, yeah. I, for, for those of you who don't know the character Ogie, he is very, um, you know, quirky and he's like out there, but he's still, he's still kind of smart. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, that could have helped with the role. Now, did you go specifically in for Ogie or mm -hmm. did you go for any other, you know, member of the cast? Just for Ogie. And I only had one audition. I went in and I I did that. Diane Paula said, that was great, thank you so much. I walked outside the room and I was like, all right, back to catering. I was doing a, a I was working a job in Central Park with my now wife and I was protecting, my job was to watch all of the coats and the bags of all of the people who were on staff for that day. So it was like hundreds of coats and bags and that was just my job. So I had a friend cover me for the three hours that I wanted to go down and like prepare for the audition, have the audition and then travel back. It was, uh, yeah, it was wild. And then, so I walked outside the room, I got ready to go back to Central Park and Cassie came out, they were like, hey, we want you to come back in and just go through the material again, work with the director, work with Diane and, and Sarah. And I was like, all right, sure. So I went back in, they worked with me for like 10 minutes and then I went back to cater and I was like, that was a very crazy experience. And I got the call the next morning that I got the part. So Sarah was in the, in the room, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. That, that's, I, I mean, were you were a fan of Sarah before you went to audition? Yeah, I, I absolutely. I loved her music. I wasn't like a hardcore Sarah right. Bareilles fan, but mm -hmm. I'd heard her hits and was like, these songs are awesome. And exactly. then after doing the show, Definitely a hardcore, um, yeah. Sarah Bareilles fan. Little voice, all that stuff is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I would be so starstruck if I went in there. I wouldn't even be able to speak. <laughs> like I wouldn't know what to do. Um, but I know you mentioned before that you said your manager got you the role. So how did like mm -hmm. got you the audition, not the role? You got yourself the role. But um, how how did you get your manager? I got my manager through uh, my friend. A friend who I grew up with, Jake Smith, his aunt was a manager. And I was, this was actually, this is a throwback to when I was doing Blood Song of Love, which was Joe Iconis' Spaghetti Western rock and roll musical that was at Ars Nova <laughs> in 2010, so close to my heart. And I was very fortunate. I, I was nominated for a Drama Desk Award that year and for that show. So my friend Jake was like, oh, you should work with my aunt. She's a manager. She manages people in New York talent. And I was like, sure. So, so you got uh, lucky. I got lucky. And you didn't have to go shoot. over and like submit, submit here, submit there. I don't know. Yeah. Though I do that. I, I, I used to do that all the time. And that hustle, I, I feel like even when I had um, Lori, who is the name of my manager, even when she was my manager, I was doing that hustle. Um, as well to find out just just because I I always love working towards finding jobs. That's that's part of the hunt and the chase is something that I like. So I, I have trouble just sitting back and letting somebody just work for me. Yeah. I I always like to see what's out there. And uh, that was at a time where I I was always looking to I had a list of shows and roles that I wanted to do. So I was always hunting for those shows and roles in regional theaters or in New York and sending that to my manager being like, I want to go in for this. I want to do that. So that was always part of the the hustle for me. 
yeah, that, that's good. And it eventually, you know, got you to Broadway, which I'm assuming was the goal, right? Obviously. Yes. I mean, that, that was something that I always <laughs> dreamed of I mean, ever since I went to the theater school, ever since I sang Hi Ho um, from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs when I was like three with my parents. That was like, uh, it was something that I aspired to. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, and there you are. That's, that's so crazy. But um, how much did they develop the character when it was at ART, Ogi? I mean, we, we developed and we played around with Ogi. The whole show was in flux at, yeah. at ART. So yeah. the, it was, it was both an incredibly exciting and fun experience as well as like the stress of figuring out what this show is and who these characters are. And the, I mean, the team was so awesome in the way that they were so flexible and open to creative input. I would sit down with Sarah and Diane and we talk and Jesse uh, Nelson, book writer, and we would talk about Ogie and like who he is, how he fits with Dawn, what, what is his arc? What are his quirks? Um, so they were so open to that. There was actually, this is a, a song that never really saw the light of day, but it, it lived for a, about a week in, at ART where Sarah wrote another song for Ogie, which was like kind of like a gospel tune, which was in place of I Love You Like a Table. They ended up going okay. back to I Love You Like a Table because they loved the way that functioned but in Act still, Two for him. They still put the little gospel riff in that song because uh, like uh, just a little yeah. bit. I'm sure, yeah, I mean, the, I, I feel like Sarah is so great at pulling from anything she's written and then adding these motifs into songs that are actually existing in, in the show. Um, yeah, the, it, 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 was, it was cool. So she wrote this song for like, specifically that functioned like on my voice in the show. And even though it didn't end up being in the show, she wrote so many different numbers for Waitress that didn't make it in. It was a really cool process to be a part of seeing how these decisions are made and um, what ends up making it into the show and what doesn't. And it was, when, when I was a kid, I always thought, even, even when I was you know, in my early twenties, I thought that all of these shows, these Broadway shows are just like, they are perfect and they are put onto a stage having like everyone signed off like, oh, it's a finished product. And just being a part of this developmental process and of other shows, even though they haven't necessarily made it to Broadway, shows are never finished. They are constantly in development and creative teams and actors and producers are always wanting to make changes up until the last moment until the show opens. Right. So, and then even past that, um, even say. on tour. So there were all these things on tour that we changed in the show, like the little tweaks that the creative team was like, we've been sitting, we didn't have time to finish this in tech for Broadway, but now we have some time to like implement some changes and to see what might work and fit in a different way for this group of people. So that's such a, I feel like that was, that was an awesome thing to experience in the life of the show. I mean, I'm, I'm skipping from ART all the way to the tour, but right. It's always the developmental process is always ongoing, and it's wow. it's just very a very cool thing. You originated two roles with the waitress production, one in ART <laughs> and then one on Broadway. That is that's uh -huh. pretty crazy. And then you went back when you went on the waitress tour, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, people underestimate the ensemble so much, and I feel like the show wouldn't happen without them especially in a show like Waitress, because I wish people can see you in the role because I don't like, they have to see how much you guys actually do as an ensemble. There's so many pieces that have to be moved. So many correct hand, like that your hands have to be correct or else, mm -hmm. you know, the main actress's face is going to be blocked and uh, you're working with real food props. So yeah. for anybody who doesn't know what Waitress is, um, the premise of the show is basically of a small town pie shop um, that uh, this waitress Jenna works in and um, her husband isn't the best and she finds this gynecologist that, uh, you know, she ends up falling. I don't want to give too much away because there's, <laughs> there's still – and there's a, a great movie by Adrian Shelley, mm -hmm. um, like we were saying before, Sarah Bareilles and Diane Paulus and Jesse Nelson wrote – 
the whole musical. Um, but I don't want to give too much away because you can still find, you know, the CD. You the CD is on iTunes. It's still it's still on Amazon. I I listen to it every day. Um, there's little clips out there and everything. But yeah, definitely if you get the chance, definitely go and uh, watch that. But they use because it's you know there's baking and everything like that. When you walk into the theater, it smells like pie. But we'll get into that later and all that. But uh, <laughs> uh, they uh, the ensemble has to work with real props so real flour real real butter right yeah i mean there there were a lot of real real props the props team is incredible they they had to come up with so many different solutions that were it's a combination of like real things and and fake things so right. but yeah people ate real pie on stage like consistently there's real like blueberries and um like chocolate sauce and milk and it's all um there's there's so many different tricks to the to the trade for for the egg that jenna would crack it was it was a peat a piece of like peach in the peach juice and it looked at like like an egg right so and you can't you uh, can't you can't tell it all like i was sitting i saw the show twice the second time i was sitting second row still mm -hmm. couldn't it still looks real so they did a really good job with that. Um, in mm -hmm. ART, was it fake props while they were trying to figure out the real stuff? No. Or were you guys there was trial and error? totally real food. There was totally real food. It was trial and error. We actually had one day at ART um, <laughs> where a couple of people who had like worked in food service helped consult the creative team and props and stage management on creating like a real diner where people were like served. So we kind of like had a functional diner that we like lived in for like 30 minutes to like see what behavior would come up and how, how an order would be taken and put down and how then Cal would create the order and ding the bell. The waitress would go back, get the food, take it to the table and people would get little pieces of paper and um, they would be assigned like a problem. Like, okay, so you, when you get your food, send it back, say, I didn't order these eggs this way, or uh, my toast is burnt or whatnot, or drop all your silverware on the floor so that the waitresses would then have to deal with problems and problem solve in the moment. And it definitely informed choreography. It definitely informed staging. It was, it was a cool process. And, and yes, there was real food there. Um, yeah. Did I say blueberries earlier? I think I meant to say blackberries. Yeah, yeah. you said blueberries. <laughs> my my bad. Wrong fruit, but, blackberries. But it's the wrong food, but it's still a pretty big deal because blackberries and blueberries, they're both very slippery. But if one yeah. gets left on the stage, one is going to stain it when you can clean up more. I feel like blackberries yeah. like, would stain more and maybe slip more. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So and there have been incidents where right. stuff has fallen and bowls have crashed to the floor and shattered. So. I was going to ask that. How many mishaps, people falling, people getting injured, pies falling, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, knock on wood, there actually weren't too many injuries. Uh, and whatever happened was, was minor. No one was, to my recollection, was ever like seriously injured. There were like rolled ankles and, um, you know, lifts that where someone was like, oh, my shoulder, oh, my back. And then they were taken off that lift for a while. But uh, every, it was managed in a very safe, safe way. But we, we did have moments where like a bowl would shatter and then we'd, we would like clean it up as best as possible and then do our best to move on with the show. And if something was like really scary, we would like pause, then stage management and crew would come on and address the problem and then move forward. Uh, not necessarily like injuries. There were a lot of technical issues figuring out the set in New York. And we had, we stopped a bunch in the first couple of weeks of previews in New York. It was just like incredibly complex moving parts. It, the diner in New York was, would come out and rotate and it would yeah. come out not just on a straight line, but it was on like a curve. Mm -hmm. So they're like all the moving parts underneath the diner, I, beyond my comprehension. And it's very different from the um, 
ART because ART was not a moving diner. It was set. And then you yeah. would have, you know, just like the broader production where Jenna's house would, you know, come down. Um, but the whole thing with the props probably just made it harder and harder every single day for the choreographers. Um, at ART, it was Chase, mm -hmm. right? And then I brought yeah. Lorraine or Lauren? Lauren. Lauren Lataro. Yeah. In. So yeah. that, I can't even imagine how difficult that um, must yeah. have been for them. We had a whole, um, it was three weeks where we did like a movement workshop before the Broadway production. So in between ART and Broadway, we had like three weeks to, to, to like move in Lauren's new choreography, which she was very prop centric and very, very much using props as a motivator for movement. It was, it was a, it was a long, it was a tough process figuring out how to move with all of these things, not spilling what can be real, what needs to be fake, what like can we make upside down and like coming up with a biography, adding um, like straps to the bottom of the pie so that people can use them. Right. Um, in and that, so was, it, that was just yeah. at the border production, but well, we'll mm -hmm. get into you being on tour later, but I'm sure those things were difficult <laughs> trying to incorporate them. Different cities, different stages, different audience, you know, mm -hmm. because people, some, when you go on tour, some people, you know, usually when you're on Broadway, not everybody in the audience enjoys Broadway and is targeted towards Broadway. You know, maybe they just got free tickets from there, from the place that they work at or stuff like that. So, but I think with the tour, it's a little bit of the same or a little bit different because they're going to see you guys are the main thing in town, you know, Oh, waitress, just waitress is coming to town, you know? Yeah. So we'll get into that, to the props after that. But how was the transition from uh, ART to Broadway? Was there another audition process or were they just like, oh, no, us? there was no, there was no audition process for me. Um, and I know they auditioned other people because there was a turnover of some cast between ART and the Broadway production which was the first time that I've ever had to navigate something like that, a changing cast from one version of a show to the next. Uh, I A lot of people stayed though. A lot of people did yes, go through the Broadway production though. Wonderful, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it was it was interesting. I It was my first experience, as I was saying, with a, like a bigger commercial show. So, I and I I knew that Chris had been a part of the workshops beforehand, and I didn't know if they were gonna if he was gonna come back into the show. And then when he did, I didn't know that I would even have ensemble on the table. For me, I thought it was all or nothing. Either I'd move forward with the show to Broadway, or I wouldn't get the job, and that would be that. So when I got the call that they wanted me to be in the ensemble and to cover Ogie, I I was like, oh my gosh, this is like I had to wrap my head around. I was like, oh I do I want to be in the ensemble? Of course I do. This is like the most, this is my Broadway de debut and such an amazing experience. And I'll get to play Ogie on Broadway. It was, it was definitely a recalibration of my expectations. Right. And then just like went for it. It's like my Broadway debut, this is insane. And yeah. Now, do you remember your nerves when you first heard that Bring, bring of um, Sarah's voice over the the loudspeakers before the show start. Yeah, started. I yeah. certainly do. Um, it was it was like pure excitement. I I remember it was it was not our first preview. It was our invited dress rehearsal where we had like the entire balcony filled with with like industry people and friends and family, and I was backstage with my friend Molly Hager. And Which we were just like losing our minds. We're like, this is so exciting, like so insanely exciting. We were shaking, like when uh, for the pose, which uh, Lauren Latrell called the Shiva, which was like all of the different, um, the ensemble members coming around Jenna in the opening sequence right before opening up. Right. Where we all bring in our props and then burst out. We were literally like just shaking. <laughs> with excitement and like adrenaline in that moment. It was, right. it was very surreal. It's something I'll never forget. 
and that that must have been even more like touching to to um Molly because she was at the at the last performance of the show. She stayed throughout the whole thing. I know. I know, yeah. Which it's crazy and I don't know if you saw the video of like the the la you 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 probably have of the last yeah. where um you know Sarah was like, "Oh, let's shout out everybody who has been in the production since the beginning." Mm -hmm. And Molly was one of them. And we have a picture here of you as Ogie with Jenna DeWall, who is the star of Diana on Broadway. And you can see the, you can see in the back, you see Charity and Stephanie right back there smiling. And um, they were they were uh, transferred to Broadway. Yeah. As well. So um, and they they pretty much stayed through also. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, so very special. Such a meaningful thing to stay with a show for such a long time. Right. Now, do you know if Jenna was considered, Jenna D. Wall was considered to move to the Broadway production? Um, I I imagine she was, was considered. Those decisions are so, so tough. Yeah. And I remember talking with her after, um, after like the news came out of like the new casting and hearing that she wasn't moving forward. And I was like, I, it's, it's just sad. It's sad when someone yeah. doesn't move forward with a project for whatever reasons that are decided by creatives or producers or whatnot. You know, you see it in so many different productions. Um, yeah, I mean, she was definitely upset and disappointed. And I mean, as I was in a position where I was upset and disappointed of not moving forward as Ogie. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's something that I have since coped with and 100% understand the decisions that occur in those places uh it, it's but it doesn't take away from the fact that those those moments are upsetting and definitely define us as people the way that we manage them and the way we move forward right even the fact that it was a possibility that you could have moved mm -hmm. to broadway as ogie um ogie wasn't in he's not in most of the first act but then when he does come it's like a powerhouse. You're doing Irish steps. You're doing different. <laughs> Your voice is going from up here to down here. And it's like, it's such a demanding role in my opinion, because you got to do so many things and you're kind of the, you know, crowd pleaser. You got to, you make everybody laugh and there's certain jokes, you know, when you're doing the magic trick with the fork, again, I don't want to give everything mm -hmm. away, but, um, but everything like that is just crazy. Now, when you guys moved to Broadway, how closely did you and Chris Fitzgerald, Christopher Fitzgerald, um, work together on you helping him develop the role, or did he kind of just do all that himself? Oh, he did his own thing. I mean, Chris, Chris is a, a like a masterful comedian and has so many different skills. He like immediately infused all of his personality and his his tricks into into the role uh, through writing, through collaborating with. Diane and, and Lauren and Sarah and Jesse and everyone on the team, he he just goes for it. It's it's it was truly awesome to watch him just craft this this role. And there were like definitely a couple of things that I developed at ART that the creative team stuck with and helped put into the show. And as I was also in such a fortuitous place where when I got to go on as Ogi that I was given, I didn't have to do an exact replica of Chris's performance. I got to put my spin on the role as do so many people. It's, it's also such an interesting thing of being an understudy of making sure that your interpretation of the role fits into the mold of the show that's been created and to do justice to all of your scene partners and to not upstage them or take away from them, which is something that I know that I, being honest, I struggled with as an actor in those moments because Ogi is so over the top and can get so big and, and, and so crazy that I definitely blurred the lines and I'm sure I've stepped on other people's toes in those moments. But it was also, it was a, a huge learning experience for me over the past five, five years, four, four and a half years with the show. Long time with the show. So, <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of people, they're like, oh, well, he wasn't, he was, he, 
he he you were in a lot of the broader production but you weren't in the full mm-hmm. like throughout the whole thing not many people were but um what they don't know is that you went on tour with the production as well. So you still continued the journey and you just kept, you know, rolling with everything that came at you. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So you, you originated the role. I think on your website, it says man one. Was that like your official yeah. title or man one under study? Yeah. Yogi. yeah. <laughs> um, and then while you were on Broadway, you ended up going Ogie full time for a couple weeks. So how was that I experience? did. That was a crazy experience. It was, um, I believe that was, was that the summer of 2016? Let's see, I, I, 2017. 2017, 2017, yes. That was right before I went on tour with the show. I also did the show, the first time I, I went on as Ogie was on my 30th birthday. Wow. So it was like a very crazy um, experience. And that was in 2016. And then yes, I Chris left, he was he was filming and like taking a break. And I, I got to like be the part for a couple of weeks, which was incredibly special. I getting to like notch that on my resume and say I did Ogie as a principal on Broadway on a like principal contract was such a, a cool a cool thing and very, very fulfilling in that sense. Right. And, um, when you were, uh, full time as Ogie, uh, Caitlin was your, was your Dawn, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Right. So you guys obviously <laughs> have to work <laughs> so close together. And for those who don't know what this scene is, I'm not even gonna, <laughs> gonna go there. You yeah. have to like see that clip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it must have been so fun to work with so many people and then yeah um and then you so the, it, for those of you who want to like kind of see the span of when he was throughout the show let me just show you this and you'll see how long he's been there i mean he's in every single one of these playbills so obviously he he was you you've, you were there for for a whole minute I was there for a, a definitely a couple of minutes. Right. <laughs> you were more, there for more than three or four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You were there. Oh no. You're frozen. Hello, everybody. Now I have hijacked this triple threats podcast so I can talk about what I want to talk about. I'm kidding. Um, while. Garrett is navigating some technical issues. I guess I can go and talk about, I'll just continue to talk about my, my history with the show. Okay, there you go, amazing. Okay. You were in the in the Broadway production um, and the tour. So let's talk about from Broadway to tour. Did they ask you or did you audition for the tour? They asked me. And that's, it was my crazy. decision to either stay with the production in New York as ensemble understudy Ogie and maybe someday bump up to Ogie on Broadway or to sign a long-term contract for the tour and play Ogie. So, I mean, it was like, it was a not, not like a, a difficult decision because I wanted to play Ogie, but I didn't also like leaving New York is not an easy thing. And I... I didn't want to leave my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife. Oh. And I, well, so it, was, it was tough. Yeah. He went on tour as well, right? He certainly did. Yes. <laughs> that was. So that kind of worked out, anyways. Yeah. I mean, um, she's an amazingly talented actress. It was, yeah. the way it worked out was wonderful. Right. And um, now she was in the ensemble. So were you able to, like, help her a little, like she definitely did the whole thing on her own, but like, were you able, since coming from the Broadway ensemble, were you able to, you know, you know, help her a little bit and like, you know, guide her? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, she, she had seen the show so many times by the time she had her audition. I think she had seen the show like 40 some times over the life of the show from ART through Broadway, through the first segment of the tour. 
um, which was a year to that, uh, almost a year. It was like 10 months into the tour mm -hmm. when she got her audition. It was right before the LA leg of the tour. We were there for a month. And uh, I, I found out that there was gonna be an opening in the show and we reached out to casting and they were like, yes, please like, like make an audition tape and we'll, we'll, we'll try and if it works, it works. And she did, she knocked her audition tape out of the park. We did it like with two hours notice. We were in Midtown. I was, I came back to New York, like just to spend time with her and to like be in New York. And we rented like the only audition room available <laughs> near us and just like knocked out some like off, like some songs acapella and she made a, a dance tape and then had to like do like jump through some more hoops with casting and creatives. And then she got the, okay, it was, it was wild. And that's like a dream come true. Like imagine going on tour with like your girlfriend, was she, did you guys get married during the tour or? She was at the time my fiance because right before I left for tour, I proposed to her. I was like, I am locking this down. Aww. We are going to be <laughs> together forever. Right. So, um, and we got married right after, a month after the tour finished. Gotcha. And yeah. so I have a, uh, don't have a playbill, but I have this little, like, uh, it came, it came in the program. And yeah, insert, insert. Yeah. Insert. There you go. There's the words. <laughs> And um, it must have been pretty cool seeing your name up there and then you headlining as Ogie. You know what I mean? And then your wife being right there. Yeah. So um, that must have been really cool. And there were some – there's great people on this tour. I mean, Christine and um, Stephen Good, you, David, I, who was – I mean – Who eventually yeah. transferred to the Broadway production. A lot of people. I mean, it was a fantastic cast the, the entire the entire time. It was just like amazing talent uh, from the beginning and through all all of the the replacements on tour. It, it was just outstanding. I I I just think they remember going out on tour and being so proud of the tight show that we we created to take on the road with such incredible talent. Right. Now, so, road, so blessed. On the road, how did the props get affected with that? Because, you know, you're you're in a big truck. All the set pieces are in this huge truck right here. Mm -hmm. And um, is was there big freezers that everything was kept in? Did you guys have to go grocery shopping every week in the little towns that you guys were in? The, this was something where they, um, our, our props team, two people, would um, – would go out and they would have to like call ahead and source where they were going to get the pies and they would have oh. it delivered. Or if they couldn't get, they couldn't get like a sponsorship, which like sometimes like it was like whole foods would sponsor the, the pies and like whatever right. cities, or you'd have to get it from like a local bakery. It, it was like, it was so much. The logistics so were, were like, difficult. You guys were essentially pie tasting from each place that you guys went to. Yeah, I the thing is like I never got to eat any pie. I never got to eat pie as Ogie, and I never got to eat pie as Man One. He was like one of the only people in the show that did not eat any pie, so <laughs> I never had to navigate that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yes, uh, so Alex would always taste the pies, and sometimes the pie was not very good. I will not name any bakeries, uh, <laughs> but she'd come off stage. She's like, I cannot even touch this pie. This pie right. is disgusting to me. Um, I have like an ethereal glow right now as like the sun is me shifting. Too. <laughs> me too. The sun is like <laughs> bouncing off of the the floor in front of me. And despite my ring light, I look like yep, I, I have a flip. Yeah. You can like, you can see everything. I have the two big lights, but I still have the little, the little door light popping in. <laughs> It's like when That's Hans so is like looking at Elsa throughout his little ice piece. That's exactly what you look at. Yeah. <laughs> right <now. laughs> um, I'll lean forward. There we go. That's more balanced. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but yeah, so you you did that. That that must have been crazy. I was I was thinking about that. Like, doesn't the milk expire at some point? Were you guys using actual milk? 
Um, I don't think anyone consumed any milk. Milk would just okay. be poured. I think this was specifically for uh, soft place to land when they were pouring right. milk and chocolate, but they would also then like throw in like uh, glitter and <laughs> Uh, yeah. like sparkles and stuff. So right. no one was, no one was eating that. Sorry well, if that's yeah. a spoiler for anybody who thought that pie was, <laughs> was being consumed by anyone in the cast. It would have really hurt someone. So no, there was at least, at no least that pie. right. And um, now when you guys went on tour at the Broadway production, they have a little room in the back where mm -hmm. pies are baked freshly, like a little Sara Lee pie, right? Mm -hmm. Just doused in cinnamon and, nutmeg and everything like like that but it makes the theater yeah. smell good did you guys have that on tour yes so it it wasn't as effective in every single space because the theaters are so vastly different uh but yes that whenever it was possible they had that convection oven out in the lobby just with a fan pumping that scent into the noses of every single person coming in so it's very like very satisfying can you guys smell that on stage? Right, you can, right? Sometimes, yeah, yeah. definitely. In the Broadway house, you could 100% smell it on stage. Yes. Uh, not always, wow. not always uh, on tour because it depended on where they could put that convection oven and what the what lobby was like. Right. So sometimes, not not quite as often though. So how did um, the set change from the Broadway to the tour? How, how be with you being in the Broadway production, Mm -hmm. How did you, how did you like handle that change? Were, were you the only one that transferred from Broadway to tour? No, no? Charity. Oh yes, yeah. yes. Charity was Charity was Becky. So yes, and that was it was like very similar to oh my to God, my experience where she. That. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was a very cool thing where she got to be there and develop Becky in a full rehearsal process because she's. Absolutely spectacular. Like oh. such an insane talent, such a a wonderful person too. Right. Yeah, yeah. she's and now I know she's doing her cooking thing. Um yeah. which is good. Um, because we're all finding ways to get through this and keep little yeah. projects going. And I understand you and your wife um created to find your funny. <laughs> and there you guys are. Oh, that now, graphic always kills me. <laughs> I have a question. Did you guys take this picture on the wall that you're, you're, um, no, no, uh, no, we did not. Um, one second. I, this light is bothering me so much <laughs> that I just, I cannot be in that up glow. It's going to, this should be better. There we go. Good. That's what, that's what curtains are for. Oh my gosh. Look at that balanced light. Oh my goodness. Um, there you go. no, so we did, that was actually, that that picture we took, um, it was at Alex's friend's engagement party, and they had like a photographer there, and so we just took like what was that our approximation. Meant, that wasn't even meant for find your funny. No, we just <laughs> we had a couple of those photos because <laughs> we're just we're just idiots. So what we were doing in that in that was like you know like community theater photos or like children's theater where everyone like gets put into a pose right. that <laughs> is like trying to approximate what happens in the show. So that's what we were doing in, in that, like just creating like fake, fake shows, fake examples of community theater still shots. So yeah, that, that that's was so funny. So tell us a little bit <laughs> about, about what you guys do, how you guys started it um, and everything like that. And for anybody that wants to go check that out, all of Jeremy's links will be in the description below and you can just go ahead and click them there. All right. So Thank you. No problem. Let's talk about uh, Find Your Funny Now. <laughs> so Find Your Funny. Oh, it does. It's, it's, so, it's so absurd and we look so stupid, but we're having so much fun, um, which is really like what we're doing with our, our classes here. So Find Your Funny, uh, it, it was actually born, it ties right into Waitress. Some of, we met so many Lulus on tour because every single city, there were two Lulus that each did four performances every week in that city. Uh, so we met two Lulus, two families, and I I would always meet meet them and get like semi close with the families. They're all so sweet. So one of the moms was like, 
our kids are looking for something to do. This was back in November of this past year. Mm -hmm. And they're like, would you like ever teach like an acting or like an improv class just to have fun? And I was like, yeah, of course, we'd, we'd love to do that. So we started doing that with four of the Lulus from the tour and it just started to take off. And that created more like other Lulus were like, oh my gosh, I want to take this. And so we off were like, all right, let's do two classes. And now we're up to six classes uh, teaching. Four of those are for age six to nine because that's so many of the Lulus. We had so much demand for that. And now we're expanding into nine to 11 and 11, uh, 12 to 14. We're gonna add another class soon for, uh, which is also gonna have some waitress themed ties in there as well. Uh, it's gonna be on Wednesday nights. Okay. So uh, just to go along and with the White Food Wednesday sort of thing. What's and the, that's gonna be for like high school age. Okay. Kids. All right. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Cause I, I think a lot of yeah. people would look look forward to, you know, my high school students look forward to, um, you know, getting classes and talk, bring up the topic of high school. You went to, you went to high school, you did theater throughout high school. Yeah. I, then, I was actually kind of a late bloomer in theater in high school specifically. And, oh, that's weird. <laughs> Being that you're so talented, you Broadway. It's like, I, did, I mean, that happened. The thing is like Broadway. I, that, that's a whole nother conversation where Broadway is like an awesome thing, but it's like, it's not the defining right. character. It's not the defining moment in anybody's career. It, sh it yeah. shouldn't be. There's so much more to do uh, other than commercial Broadway theater, but it, it is so special and amazing. It's such a platform that yeah. promotes the art form. That's my soapbox moment about Broadway. Um, <laughs> but and, um, I, I did, I did community theater uh, right. from what like sixth say. grade through even into up into college, mm -hmm. but I didn't I didn't do any of the high school productions until my my junior year. I I always loved singing and I loved being in choir. And I loved being a goofball, but I never put it all together until in right. high school until my junior year. Now, did you meet Alex in high school or was that in college? No, that was I was after I, I met after? her. Yeah, I met her in uh, 2015, tw uh, last day of 2014. It was a New Year's Eve party at my apartment. So gotcha. yeah, we had so many mutual friends and one of her friends invited her over. And uh, actually my, my friend, Bill, who's also friends with her, invited her over and we met and we talked for like three hours and I was like, I really like this girl. And the rest is history. Right. <laughs> or herstory, her, history, herstory, both. Right, Say, yeah, that's true. Now, where did you go to college? Can you tell us a little bit about like the whole? Totally. Know, if you did, you go to you went to a musical theater college. Uh, like basically. I did, right. I went to NYU. I got a degree in vocal performance at the Steinhardt School. So mm -hmm. I, I my love for music was definitely something that pushed me in that direction instead of getting a, a BFA at Tisch. Yep. So that's why I was drawn towards the music program. Yeah, so I, I spent four years there and I did a ton of song analysis and didn't take nearly enough dance, but loved tap. So that was like one of my my fortes and uh, just slow, like kept falling in love with the art form. And one of my big, uh, one of the people who motivated me the most in school was John Simpkins, who is an amazing director. He works um, as the head of the department for musical theater at I think it might be even more than just musical theater now at Penn State. Okay. He's he's brilliant. He is a collaborator with Joe Iconis. I've worked with him in many shows. And he he really fueled my love for theater and gave me so many opportunities yeah. to work on on new work and to see that it's not just golden age musicals, but there's new work being developed all the mm -hmm. time. And if you want to, you can be a part of it. So I right. was very fortunate have, to have that guidance. Have you ever thought of, you know, writing your own musical? I know it takes. <laughs> yeah. I kind of did. I kind of wrote a, a a weird little short musical with Joe Iconis many moons ago, and it was called The Hick Show, and it was kind of based off of a character that was in Blood Song of Love, who was the character's name was Hick and Overalls. And <laughs> so I played him. I also played that character in a couple of 
uh, Joe Iconis Christmas Spectaculars. If you don't know cool. Joe Iconis, go look him up. He's incredible. He wrote uh, so chill. many amazing shows. Uh, Be More Chill being yep. the most recent Broadway show that he he wrote, and I'm sure well, he'll have many more. Didn't he? Uh, oh, what is that one? It was like the Broadway Bounty Hunter. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> I, know, I, I didn't get to see that because I was out out on tour, and then it it closed, which was so so right. sad. Yeah, because that that show is so funny, and I'd I'd seen so many different iterations of it over the years, and right. it, and I was Did also co-written by. By Did you Joe, see- uh, by Jason and Lance. Sorry, go oh, ahead. No, sorry. Did you get to see Be More Chill on Broadway? I did. I did. I got to see it. I saw opening night it of Be More Chill at Two River Theater. And that was like at the same time I found out, I had just found out that I booked Waitress that week. And I remember I told a couple of friends at the opening of Be More Chill. And then I saw the show off Broadway and then I saw, saw it on Broadway. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so you were you you were kind of there for that process too, and as an audience standpoint, um, mm. yeah. That so now after you left the after the waitress tour ended, mm-hmm. um, you get married, and you just kind of took a break from there, or did you go? What did you do after that? Uh, like literally the most non-break that you can have. I. <laughs> We got married on September 21st, 2019, and I started rehearsal for Frozen okay. on September 23rd. So got married oh. one day where we cleaned up. We're here in Massachusetts where we got married right now. Right. Um, we're next door to the house where we got married. And then uh, drove back to New York and started rehearsal for Frozen the day after. So wow. it was it was insane. And so, then went on tour um, like a month and a half later. How was the audition process for that? You went in, you auditioned, or? That's so funny. I auditioned, I, I made it. We were in in Atlanta, Georgia, doing, we're performing at the Fox Theater with Waitress. And I got an audition as, to make a tape. So I made a tape, I sent it in. It was a ludicrous tape for Wesselton mm-hmm. where it was the, there was like a blanket, the blanket scene, if you know, uh, it's Hans of the Southern Isles reprise right. in, in frozen and I, a- I didn't have any blankets or anything so i had hand towels that i just kept wrapping <laughs> around my shoulders <laughs> well did they know that you were in the waitress tour at the time of filming your audition yeah because it's oh, the same yeah. casting so telsey's okay. office right, right, right um so then i i found out like two two weeks later they're like we want you to come to final callbacks and we were going to be in west palm beach with waitress so it was two years ago, like this week, that I had my final callback for um, for Frozen. Sorry, it's like all coming back to me. Yep. I where I fl- I had a I had a Sunday. We had a Sunday matinee. No, I had to miss a show. I had to fly back. For- no, I did not. I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I'm a dirty <laughs> liar. I think I'm pretty sure I flew back Sunday night. I got in Monday. I had like th- two work sessions on Monday where I worked with the music team and the associate. And then I got my appointment for the next day, which was Tuesday, where I, we then had to, I had to fly back to Florida and we had a show that night. So I had like a 10 a.m. audition. I was the first person to go in that day. And then I ran to the airport, flew down and had a show. And then it was like, I think it was that Friday where I found out I got the call that I got the offer for Wesselton. Wow. And it was, it was very crazy, dude. It was, it was so wild. I was like both excited and I was like, I'm going on tour again. Oh no. But also like, (laughs) I'm, we're going to get married and I'm going to have job security. I'm going to get to be in like the original cast of a, a Broadway tour and to get to work with this amazing creative team. It was, and work with Disney. You you got to originate the role with Waitress, and then you go and originate the role on Frozen on, on the tour. And I saw Frozen, the Broadway production. I didn't get to see the tour, but um, I can imagine it's somewhat different because it's different people. It's Yeah, new. different people. And there were a lot of changes that were yes. implemented, both on a technical standpoint, because there's different set pieces that yeah. were only like the 
the show in New York is a fixture. It doesn't have to be moved every two, three weeks. Did you get to see the New York show? Yes, we got to, they, they gave us tickets uh, oh. while we were in rehearsal in New York. Oh, okay. And yeah, yeah, beautiful. It, it, oh yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, if anybody hasn't seen Frozen on Broadway, there's, I, again, I'm not going to give it away. Um, there's ice shooting up from the ground and, you know, big machines that blow. And I'm pretty sure you, people have seen seen clips and everything, but, um, how, how many, this is you in, in, in your role with Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's such a, you can see your little mustache right there. <laughs> he looks, and so for you can't see, but Elsa and Hans is right next to him. But um, yeah. So what was this green screen, or was the, or was that actually the prop? Like the, that was on that was on the set. That was it. Like they it. had green what screen shots for some of the other um, characters as well. But I, um, yeah, that was on the set. I mean, they they wow. it's beautiful. The lighting is insane. The tech that they use for the show is, I mean, it's top notch. Disney mm -hmm. does not mess around. The they music? just do it, huh? The music it was great in the movie, oh, yeah. and then Kristen and Bobby kind of added their own little. Whoop, let's do this for Broadway, you know what I mean? Yeah. So there was a new song in the tour that wasn't in the broader production. Yeah. So, and then they eventually added it to the Broadway production before the show. Yeah, they certainly so, did. So which tour was harder, Waitress or Frozen? Huh, that is such an interesting question. I each the thing is like each tour had its had its pros and I mean cons. I, it, it's tough to say cons because having having that type of job, I with with that consistency in such great beautiful shows, there's there's not really cons. But I, the waitress tour was under, I mean, to get technical, was under a CETA contract. So it's short engagement touring agreement. So we we on waitress, we were allowed to just have like one week stops. So it was a lot of like one week, go to the next city, one week, go to the next city, which is taxing. So constantly traveling is definitely a taxing thing. Literally, right. you finish your show, show Sunday, you pack up your bags, you travel Monday, you get in, you have a rehearsal Tuesday, you open the show Tuesday, and you have eight shows that week, as well as probably have rehearsal. With Frozen, it was a little less. I mean, before we shut down, our sit downs were, we were we teched in Schenectady and opened there. So we were there for like a month and a half. Then we were in LA for two months. We were in Seattle for a month and we were in Portland, what would have been three weeks in our shortest engagement. But and it was just also different temperatures there, like everywhere uh -huh. you go. So you have to constantly yeah. change and pack different things, shop. Yep, you got a trunk. You got a bit right. frozen. Also, it was being a production contract uh, and not a CETA um, show. You get bigger trunks. You, there's like there's more perks to the production contract. So that definitely was a helpful thing. You get more per diem, more to spend on housing and 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 food. So there's like perks to each. I, I no sh no shade on on Frozen. I I the role of Ogie is definitely a bigger comedic role right. that was more creatively satisfying. It's a bigger role. Uh, in yeah, uh, and Wesselton was was fun. I love playing villains. So like getting to step into that aspect, like that that type of villain was such a different color to explore uh, as an actor. So exciting and different. Did you yeah. refer more back to the Broadway production than the movie Frozen? Or did you look into the movie as well a couple times for characters? I mean, I, the, the team was very like, very much like Jeremy, you develop this character for you. Gotcha. Don't do what anybody else does. So you do your thing, you find your character. And that's what's so awesome about so that any other production, like even small community theater productions, like of Little Shop. So now we see different, you know, a bunch of different versions of these musicals, which hopefully we'll get to see. I know Waitress is going to be able to be um, put on soon. I don't know if it's available yet, but um, it's like community theaters. The tour? Oh, I, I doubt, I doubt it's going to be re released. It'll probably be another year. 
uh, my, yeah. my guess, because I imagine the producers would want to maintain the license for uh, a tour that's moving around. They don't want competing productions, but maybe, I mean, I, I don't know. That's, that's all the business of right. licensing, making sure there's not oversaturation in markets. So that's, that's above my pay grade. That's not even my, <laughs> my job. Right. But it's still pretty cool to think about all that. Um, yeah. If we just did come to a small community, like a community theater near you, would you go mm -hmm. and be in the production again? Be in it. I mean, I don't, the thing is, like, it would be a union thing if I was allowed to union wise, uh, like, you know, in a hot second. Like, if there's like the regional theater productions that occur, say, in like, you know, five to 10 years, mm. you bet your butt that I'm like getting <laughs> my, like, getting on my like button up shirt to play Ogie or like, I personally, it's been my dream to play Dr. Palmer too. I, I would yeah. like love to play like a small, like comedic Dr. Palmer. I would, right. I would love to do that. <laughs> yeah. That would so, yeah, that'd be different. That'd be fun though. Uh, yeah. It would, I mean, it's, I don't know if that dream's ever going to become a reality, but we'll see if I direct my own production, I'll be that guy. I'll be like, I am playing <laughs> Dr. Palmer in this. And they're going to be like, are you sure? I'll be like, yeah, I'm sure. And I'll just say, Hey, it's better than me playing Earl. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which would be um, funny, but not for the right reasons. Right. No. So now being when you guys were on the road when it shut down, how did you guys handle that? Were did you like stay where you were for a little bit? Did you directly get on a plane? No. Like, uh Yeah, this is a great I mean, it's we're approaching the one year anniversary of it happening. It's we've been thinking about it a lot. Um I I remember I was having conversations with with Alex, my wife, and I was like, come out here, come out to Portland, because so many of the cast members were like, we're just gonna stay. And then when the tour starts up in a month, we'll, we're just gonna go there from here. I was like, that actually sounds kind of fun and like to have like make a vacation out of it. And uh, I'm very glad my wife was like, Jeremy, this thing is like really bad. I'm right. like, what if we come out and like, what we get sick? Like, what if I get sick on the plane? Like. And I was like, okay, like, he's like, what if we get stuck out here and we can't get back? Like, who, who knows? So I was like, okay, this is, this is very good common sense. Thank you, my amazing wife for having a great perspective here. And so I flew back, it was that Friday. So I think it was like the day after, yeah. The day after I jumped on a plane, went back to New York. And I'm glad that Alex didn't fly out because she ended up coming down with COVID just days later. Wow, and she's okay. Yeah, it would. She still is dealing with like uh, scent, uh, smell issues. But right. um, have you have otherwise, you guys tried any of the, the TikTok remedies? Are you on TikTok? I like i I have a TikTok account, but I have not touched it or watched it. Or I watched <laughs> it. That's like sounds like I'm a 90 year old person. Like I haven't watched the TikTok. <laughs> um, <laughs> so roll through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um did you have covid as well uh no i did yeah. even though we were together for two weeks i <laughs> never tested positive for antibodies but alex still has them wow that's that's yeah. crazy but that's good though yeah but i'm glad she everything ended up okay because you know there a lot of people didn't yeah, no, I know. It's, it's it's been a very sad, tragic year of, of so much loss. So I'm I'm very fortunate that she is okay. So yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. So you you stayed in. You said Portland. You were in, or did you went flew back the next day? Okay. So Thursday everything shut down. Friday flew back. Nice. Well, that's good. You weren't stranded anywhere that you didn't know where anything was. So you yeah. flew back to New York or Massachusetts uh -huh. where you are now? To New York. To okay. New York. Yeah. yeah. So everything was shut down there. Mm -hmm. Completely. Like a, a ghost town. It still is. Have you have you been to the city at all or Yeah, we we've gone back a couple of times. But we've stayed here in Massachusetts for pretty much the past uh I'll be like eleven months. Mm, that's yeah. So we came up in April. Um, to Massachusetts from New York of last year. Gotcha. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And it's crazy that we've been a year you know, there's no stage doors. I don't think there will be for a while. Um, hope live theater can come back. It's looking like it, it yeah. kind of can, you know, there's been the New York pop-up. Um, yeah. I mean, it's allowed. It's allowed in New York now. It, the, yeah. the, you can have a hundred people in, in a theater. It's gotta be, I, I think 25 or 33% capacity. 33. I can't remember 33% capacity. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that's, that's going to happen. I, it's right. just how, how quickly will it be done? It has to be done safely. It's just everyone just get, get vaccines. That's like, put, yeah. put the vaccine yeah. in your arm right there. when you it's can. It's not going to hurt yeah. you. <laughs> just make you better. Now, yeah. have you been auditioning through the pandemic or just working on a uh, find your funny? Let's do this one more time. Just working, <laughs> <laughs> just working on find your funny. Uh, I've auditioned. I've, I've I've had a couple of um, auditions that I've worked on. It's it's all been TV film stuff, right. which I'm working mm -hmm. on in classes um, on a weekly basis, which I love. Um, and find your funny has been the past like, since November, so uh, the past five four and a half months. Wow. But before that, I I started getting I'm getting my my MBA, so I'm I'm getting my business degree right now. Yeah. So I think that's going to be something that serves me in the future as we are creating our own business with find your funny and slowly scaling that. And I feel like and to teach so, as well. So many Broadway stars that couldn't continue because of the pandemic have turned to, you know, real estate agents mm -hmm. made like their own, their own business. Like you guys did, which I like to see cause you can still, and they still incorporated, you know, what they were doing before, which is, mm -hmm. which is really good. But I'm glad that you guys are, you know, able to, a, we're able to, you know, find your funny. And um, <laughs> you are just like, you undo me. It's like, I look into Alex's eyes and the fact that she's like looking up and away, like it's all too much. It's just, <laughs> yeah. That is what kills me in that. Like my pose is like, fine, I'm, I'm enjoying it. But like Alex just kills me in that picture. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> So uh, your funny is improv classes, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that that's, you don't really, you don't find that much. You, you find the, you know, the musical theater classes and everything like that. So that's really good. Again, like I said, um, everything will be linked below, but right now I would like to play a fun little game. Ooh. It's, it's called, um, guess the musical. So basically I'm going to take portions of, of playbills and mm -hmm. it should be a very very small portion of the playbill it'll get harder as you go and you have to guess it the timer will be up there okay um, and yeah and then there'll be a leader chart at the end of each month for everybody <sighs> that's been on the podcast to see i'm gonna be so bad i'm gonna be everybody. so bad at this i think you'll be fine until maybe the end i think you'll be good but let's oh. play guess the musical All right. All right, so 30 seconds are going up on the clock, and I'm going to put up the first picture, all right? Here we go. Wicked. Okay. You could say pass if you want to pass. Uh, it, mean, mean Girls? Yes. Okay, Waitress. Okay. Beetlejuice. Okay. Hamilton. Okay. Book of Mormon. Okay. Oh, pass. Okay. Oh, was that Tier Van Hansen? No. That was. Uh, come from, it was? Come from away. Yeah. There we go. Uh, the prom. Ah, uh, time's up. <laughs> oh! Yes, you got the prom. That was right. Okay. And I'm not going to – There, there is more. I'm not going to show it away. But you got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight within the 30 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Eight within – 30 seconds. All right. So you'll, you'll be added to the leaderboard for that. I, I love that game. That's I think fun. Good. That's good. It's a fun one, right? Yeah. There, 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 there was a couple more. I don't want to name them because any, anybody can watch this episode and then, you know. Yeah. You don't want any cheaters. Yeah. yeah. Let, it, <laughs> let it play out. There, the, it'll be different though. It'll be different. But um, 
so yeah, like I said, everything will be linked for Jeremy below. And I want to thank you so much for coming to join me today. It was a pleasure. Um, this, this is was fantastic. Fun. Thank you, dude. Um, <laughs> no problem. I love this. Anything else that you wanna you wanna mention before we head out of here? Um, no. I mean, get this is this is so great. Um, yeah, get the vaccine, and also just like tune in to this guy. There's direction. This guy's <laughs> podcast. This is this Thanks. is awesome. I'll I appreciate in all the directions. It. This guy, wherever the frame is, <laughs> I'm all about it. Well, everybody, make sure you go give Jeremy a follow on Instagram. Um, check out his work. He is incredible. Like I said, originated the role of Ogie in Waitress. Um, Russell Tin on, broad, on the tour and did Waitress on tour as well. And we look forward to seeing what other projects you're doing. So thank you so much again. And um, thank you. Guys, yeah, no problem. I will see you guys next week on our episode with Jared Goldsmith from Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.